Welcome back to NextGen Digital once again. Today I'm talking once again on Evernote, but taking a very different perspective to it. I will go over the emergence of Evernote, the challenges they have faced over the years, and also about its future. Since this is the most popular note-taking app besides OneNote, I'm not going to give any tutorial or walkthrough on its features. I've done a few of these already in the past and I'll leave a link below in the description for you to check it out anytime. But before I get into this, I wanted to acknowledge that I'm a huge, huge fan of Evernote and have been using it for the last 11 years and have about 15,000 plus notes in it. I love this platform. So without any further delay, let's talk about it. Talking about Evernote as a company, Evernote is an app designed for note-taking, organizing, task management, and archiving. It is developed by the Evernote Corporation headquartered in Redwood City, California. The app allows users to create notes, which can be text, drawings, photographs, or saved web content. Notes are stored in notebooks and can be tagged, annotated, edited, searched, given attachments, and exported. Let's take an account of Evernote journey and see how this company has transformed over the last few years. Evernote was founded in 2000 by a Russian-American computer entrepreneur, Stepan Pachikov, as Evernote Corporation. Under the new CEO, Phil Libin, the company shifted its focus to the web smartphones and also the Apple Mac. Their beta was launched in 2008 and by 2011, Evernote had 11 million users. July 2015, Phil Libin stepped down as CEO and was replaced by former Google Glass executive Chris O'Neill, but remained as the executive chairman. In October 2015, the Evernote Corporation announced that the company was laying off 18% of its workforce and would be closing down three out of their 10 global offices. And then in September 2016, Libin stepped down as executive chairman to focus on other business ventures. August 2018, the CTO, the chief technical officer, the chief financial officer, chief product officer, and also the head of human relations also left the company. And finally, on October 29, 2018, Evernote announced that Ian Small, the former CEO of Talkbox would replace O'Neill as the CEO of Evernote. With that said, Ian Small had an enormous task to achieve as well as to repair and build this organization. It was not an easy task for him and is still not. After Ian Small performed his due diligence and is spending enormous times with the board, leadership, team, employees, as well as the users, his focus was on building three major aspects. Number one, coherent and consistent Evernote experience. Secondly, make the changes to the software and how to deliver that software. And thirdly, making improvements to the core infrastructure. The biggest problem Evernote has is its product market fit. As big as Evernote is, they really do not have a handle on what their customers actually want. And while a strong freemium acquisition strategy netted them about 225 million users, they are not taking advantage of that base at all. As an 11-year-old company, we can assume that they are battling with some pretty strong technology debt issues as well. So as a grandfather of all note-taking apps, which really isn't a good place for Evernote to be with, there are many, many new competitors entering the market. Well, I must say this, Evernote has come up with plenty of improvements on their current capabilities during the beta testing, but they are all fixing the issues and nothing new is coming up. So they are lacking that innovation and the new features what the other competition is providing to them. In a nutshell, my point is that, that no one is expecting Evernote to be perfect, but are you constantly striving to be better and innovating with new features and capabilities? This is what matters. 
not only the competition is tough, but there is plenty of innovation amongst the new players. With the emergence of note-taking apps like Otter.ai, where we can take notes using speech recognition and is gaining popularity every day. Another one is ClickUp, one of the world's best project management and productivity apps that has all the note-taking and documentation features you will ever need. Bear app with markdown features and smart tagging and nested tags available within it is providing fierce competition to Evernote already. One of the new entrants is Rome Research with cross-linking features while taking notes is growing by leaps and bounds. Finally, if you see the Evernote YouTube channel, you will see the videos from Ian Small that speaks all about fixing the issues only. That is my point here. Like building a better foundation, improving the tag experience, help shape the future of Evernote. Here is an excerpt from it uh, for you to check it out. Hi, I'm Ian Small, CEO of Evernote. In this series, we've been talking a lot about what's going on behind the scenes here at Evernote sort of looking behind the curtain, if you will. Today, we're going to do something different. We're going to try and bring you actually on stage with us, talk to you about how you can be a part of building the software that we're building together to make a better Evernote. To do that, I'm here with Jen, who drives our beta program. Jen, tell us a little bit about the beta program and why it's important. Sure, absolutely. So the beta program is one of the ways that we bring users behind the curtain and involve them in helping us create software that many benefit from. And we do this in a number of different stages. So we have previews, and previews are very early versions of our software. They have a rough shape, but they are far from complete. And during that preview stage, we're looking for early feedback and to see indicators that we're generally on the right path. The early so that's all for today. I'm still continuing with Evernote and showing my loyalty to them as any loyal user would do. However, I'm thinking of moving to another platform for note-taking that provides me a better user experience, but will definitely use Evernote as my digital bank or as my second brain. Before I wrap this up, here is my question for you. If you are using Evernote, what is your level of satisfaction with Evernote? Number one, high, number two, medium, or number three, low? Please provide your comment with these three comments, high, medium, low, in the description section. I will be back with you once again next Thursday on NextGen Digital, providing meaningful content on productivity and digital transformation. Have a great one.